Welcome CSE 103 to this hopefully quick overview of pixels, RGB color, and digital images as we start to look at digital data. And we're going to start off with photographic images since you're more familiar with doing that. You've taken pictures. So we're going to look at pixels, which are the building block of digital images. And I'm going to have a PowerPoint and I'll show you some examples too as we go through this. We'll start off with a pixel here. The term pixel comes from picture element. So that's where you see that even though there's no X in picture element. And each pixel can only display one color, although each pixel can be millions of colors depending on its bit depth. So, you know, a purple or green, whatever that is, it can be one of millions of colors, 16.7 million colors, and we'll explain the math of that a little bit later. Here's examples of pixels in raster or bitmap images. If you hear the term raster, it basically means it's going to convert those pixels into dots when it's printed out. But it means it's not using vector artwork or anything like that, which we'll talk about later. So photographic. So people use the term bitmap. That's typically what you'll hear, but really the term is raster. Now here's a, an image of flowers. And when you zoom in, you can see here, you start to see the pixels. A little almost like pointillism and painting you start to see them and then the more you zoom in you see less detail and you see more pixels you start to see the pixels less than you could see the image anymore and that's the way they work and obviously the higher resolution or the more pixels you capture the more detail you're going to capture as you zoom in so if you ever watch some uh, police show and they're zooming into something from some camera that's posted outside a convenience store and they like zoom into someone's teeth and their eyeball and stuff like that that's usually fake they would have to have super, super high resolution to do something like that. So, so that's kind of unrealistic TV stuff. All right, moving on here, we have examples of pixels in an image. Now, when we really zoom in, each pixel will come out to a color. Now, here's a gold color. Now, now the amount of colors that it can be depends on its bit depth. Now, that doesn't sound very exciting, but it just means its range of colors. You can think of it that way. So bit depth, how many bits that it is, is the amount of colors that it can be. Because we'll talk about bits when we talk about binary. So bit depth of pixels, they can vary. There's black and white, which is one bit, or bitmap. That's where the term bitmap comes from. It's one bit. It means they can either be black or white pixels. That's it. That's all you can have from a bitmap or a one bit image. And then next you see a grayscale image and they can have a range of 256 shades of gray. So they could look very realistic just without color. They'll all be gray. So that's a lot of tones of black through white through there. And then also 24-bit RGB color, which is the kind you're most familiar with. Here's a picture of leaves down here. Uh, that could be 16.7 million colors. Now again, one bit means it can only be black and white. It has to be very high resolution or it looks very kind of choppy because there's no smooth edges on it. And that's something when you would scan like a form. If you ever had to fill out a form and scan it and send it back, you only want to see the text in black and white. So that's how that's used sometimes, sometimes for like line drawings and things like that. But it's, it's hardly used as much anymore. Like I said, the most time you're going to use it is for scanning something. You have to fill out a form and send it back. You could scan it in what's called black and white. Sometimes they call it on a scanner if you use scanner software there's like black and white or there's photo gray and then there's full color now again when you're talking about black and white pixels zero is black one is white that's the way it works in binary so you'll see that we'll talk about that more with binary and grayscale again here's just a range of a couple grays but 256 is a lot of gray so it looks very smooth that's why when you see a black and white image of a photograph there's a lot of smooth tones in it i mean if you had a paint out just between 0 and 10 shades of gray, that would be very hard to do. But imagine 0 through 255. That's a lot of shades of gray, so you get a lot of detail. That's why you can have a black and white image that looks like a photo. And full color uses red, green, and blue light. Here's our leaf photo again. It uses red, green, and blue light. And that's the way monitors work, so if you think of it that way. So it's not like paint. It's not like ink. It's the way monitors use light. Old TVs would use CRT, cathode ray tubes, and now we use liquid crystal display, and they use light to display color. So actually when all the lights are on, it makes white. When all the lights are off, it makes black, like in a dark room. So that kind of makes sense. Kind of like a dimmer switch. Think of it that way. And to make full color, we use red, green, and blue lights. We don't use CMY like ink. We use red, green, and blue. And let me show you something a second. You're probably bored with looking at all those PowerPoint slides. So I'll show you an image here. This is an image of a dog in front of a soccer goal. This, by the way, is a composite image, meaning the dog wasn't really there playing soccer in front of a goal. 
because you can see he's bigger. So we silhouetted the dog and we put him in front of a soccer goal and we do that as one of our assignments. But anyway, let me zoom into this. This is a full color image and it says RGB up here, dog soccer, it's a JPEG. It says RGB, that means it can be millions of colors. That means each pixel can be one of 16.7 million colors. So let's just go into his face here. We'll zoom into his face and we'll even zoom in as far as we can. We're at 3200% and we're zoomed in. You can see it's not a very high resolution image because we're losing a lot of detail when we zoom in. And if I take the eyedropper here and I click on one of these areas like on his teeth or something, I'll click and there's the color showing here and here's the color in this RGB slider and it's showing that the color is 215, 181, 169. And you might think, well, what does that mean? Well, that's the RGB color. It's 215 red, 181 green, and 169 blue. Just like if you go mix up a paint at a paint store or something like that, or at Home Depot or Lowe's and you had to get a paint, they'd have some kind of formula. Well, that's the RGB formula. It's more red, it's less green, and it's even less blue. So warm colors are gonna have more red and green. Cool colors are gonna have more blue. Just for example, if I, if I zoom in over here, and go to the blue area of the sky and I choose one of those colors, you can see it's gonna have a lot of blue. So it'll be cooler with a lot of blue in it and these will kind of move down. If you increase these colors together, they actually form yellow together. So it's, it's kind of different than paint. It's not like mixing paint. That's why it's a, it's a completely different process. So that's the way the colors work. Each color is gonna be one. So when they get down towards zero, they're darker. So if I click on any dark pixel here, they're gonna be down towards the zero end. And if I click on light pixels, they're gonna be up to the higher end. And notice if it's a grayer pixel, all these lines, all these sliders are gonna to be together because whenever they're all together, it makes a gray. Now if I zoom out a little bit and I go over, here's some grays over here. Here's some gray colors on the soccer goal. If I take my eyedropper and click on some of them, you're gonna see a lot of these colors are gonna be very close. All these grays, whether it's a light gray or whatever, they're going to be very close. If they're a little warmer, they'll have more red. If they're a little cooler, they'll have more blue in them. So that's kind of the way the RGB colors work. Each pixel is one color and they all kind of mesh together to form all of this. We're going to talk a little bit about resolution in just a second, but let's go back to our PowerPoint. And again, we talked about red, green, and blue, and it goes from 0 to 255. If it's 255, 0, it would be all red. If it was all green it would be 255 and the others would be zero and then they all mix together if they're all the same they're grays and then if it's more warm it'll have red and green if it's more cool it'll have more blue in it so that's rgb color and there's an rgb image now we already looked at these sliders so this may not be that helpful but this is zero 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 that's black with all the sliders down this color is 163 because the red is 163, 96 and 54. And you can see it's more of a warmer color. Brown would be considered warmer because it has more red in it, it has more green in it, and there's not a lot of blue in it. So that's kind of a warmer color, we call that. And that's the number, that's how it's red. Now this is another slider using another piece of software called Pixlr, which is a photo editor. And it shows how RGB color works when they overlap, when there's only red and blue they form magenta when there's only red and green they form yellow and when there's only blue and green they form cyan and when they're all on when they're all at 255 they form white so it's different than paint because paint doesn't exactly work with that completely red and blue may make like a purple color but certainly if you mix together red and green paint it's not going to make yellow it's going to make like a brown color and this is kind of what it would be. So light is a little bit different and that's why it's called an additive process and we'll, we'll mention that in a second. But before we get to that, HSB color slider. And sometimes you could use this to mix up colors and you might think, well, what is that for? If you ever hear these terms, HSB or HSL, I use the term HSB, it's hue, saturation, and lightness. Now this circle going around is the hue. That's the color of the rainbow. If you remember science class, you had Roy G. Biv red, orange, blue, indigo, violet, and all that kind of stuff. So this is the color of the rainbow of full color around here. So this is the hue. So when you say it has a green hue, it means it's green. If it has a blue hue, it means it's blue. We don't worry about light or dark or anything. We just mean the full 100% hue of the color. Like if you'd buy paints and you'd buy the, the nice bright red or bright green, or if you'd use crayons and they were primary colors, that kind of stuff. These are kind of the main primary colors and secondary colors 
all built in here. That's the hue. Now saturation is over here. This little end going here is a saturation. Think of it as adding white paint. If you had a color and you added white paint, if you had this kind of like orangey color here and you added white paint, that's what they're doing here. It's adding white paint to it. So that's removing the saturation in a way. It's becoming less saturated. If you add white paint to a color, it'll make it more pastel. So that's removing the saturation. It's desaturating it. And, and, and desaturating completely is going to make it black and white. So that's what's happening here. It's going more on the on the gray side here when it's moving that way. And this last area, if you move down this way, is darkening it. That's why they call it brightness or lightness, because think of it as adding black paint, and it's just darkening the color. You're taking away the light from the color. So you could either be adding light to the color or taking away light from the color, or taking away the richness of the color is what we do with saturation. So hue is the color, saturation is how intense it is, and lightness and brightness is how light or dark it is. All right, now just to give you an idea of what RGB is, it's called additive color because it's it works on your computer screen and it uses light. It's not like paint. Paint's very different and it's called additive. And the way to think of it is when they're all added together, they make white. So when all the colors of RGB are turned on, like this little graphic over here, they turn white. And if you think of paint, you start with white and you start adding colors and it removes the white. So it's kind of subtractive. If you needed white, if you had a bunch of paint on a piece of paper, on a canvas, you'd have to scrape it off to get to white. So you kind of subtract to get to white and you add to get to white with RGB. So inks or paints, they're called subtractive colors and they're a little bit different than RGB color. Using light is a different kind of process. So that's why they appear differently. The photograph printed out will never have the intensity that light on a computer screen can have. And finally, getting down to the most boring details here, but also very important, is resolution. Resolution means basically how many pixels per inch is what resolution means. Now, a lot of people think it means how much quality is there, and that's true. I mean, if you have more pixels, you're going to have more quality. And if you crunch more pixels in a smaller area, you're also going to have more quality. They'll be more condensed, if you can think of it that way. Low resolution means larger pixels, and you'll see more bitmaps. If we go back here to the dog, you can see it's, it's kind of low resolution. We're seeing a lot of pixels as we zoom in. And just to give an idea, I'm going to drag a guide over here. Here's, a three, here's at one inch, or it's at three inches here, but I'm just going to mark off an inch. And I'm going to mark off here, and that's one inch on this image. Now, if you counted the pixels, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way across, you're going to get 72 because it's 72 pixels per inch. And that's fairly low resolution for this size image. And basically, that means that there's that's how many pixels there are per inch. That's the resolution, 72 pixels per inch. And you might think, well, my iPhone takes images at 72 pixels per inch. The difference is it's going to take tons of pixels. You could always cram that down into a smaller area. For example, here's the original dog picture. Now, if I zoom into here, you can see it looks a lot different. I'm seeing a lot of detail. I could see his teeth, his tongue, all the stuff that I couldn't see when I zoomed in over here. It was all kind of blocked off. That's because it's higher resolution. There's more pixels per inch. If I go out here and you can see I have to zoom out a lot. And if I mark off an inch here going from the two to three, you can see there's going to be a lot, if I zoom in here, there's going to be a lot more than 72. There's going to be like 300 pixels in this full inch area. So it's captured a lot more detail in this one inch of area. It's higher resolution. So obviously the more pixels you capture, you could put them in a smaller area. And also the more pixels you capture, you can make it bigger too. So that's why sometimes when you see an image that's 72 pixels per inch and you think, well, it looks pretty good, that's because it's like, you know, 17 inches by 12 inches or something. It's all about the pixels that you capture. And that's why you'll see things on digital cameras and phones. They'll just mention megapixels because inches is just based on what you need it for. You know, if you need it for a brochure, you might need it three inches. If you need it for something else, you might need it. If you need it for a poster, it might have to be, you know, 20 inches or something like that. So it's all based on what you need. So again, higher resolution means there's smaller pixels, there's more detail. There's more pixels per inch. So resolution, just remember that. Resolution, more pixels per inch. Lower resolution, there's less pixels, there's less pixels per inch. And when you zoom in, they're going to look bigger. Now, just one kind of way to break it down very simplistic is for print, you typically need 300 pixels per inch for a high quality image. And for everything else on web and screen and stuff like that, 72 is fine. Your eye isn't going to notice a difference. So that's usually the difference that we 
that we use. And, and that's if you're working in print. A lot of times you're not working in print. A lot of media now is for stuff on screen. There's less print going on right now. But if you get a brochure, you get something in the mail, all those images are going to be 300 pixels per inch initially when they worked on them. Now finally, I mentioned megapixels. Megapixels means millions of pixels. And digital cameras use that because now the size you use to make a picture, you can make a picture any size. Megapixels basically just measures how many pixels it's capturing. So if you're capturing a lot of pixels, if you're capturing 12 million pixels for each camera shot, that's a lot of pixels. So you could make them any size you want. So if you needed poster size, if you needed a small size, you're fine. The resolution is 72 pixels per inch by default, but you can adjust it to be any size. The important thing is once you have all those pixels there, you could do whatever you want with it. So that's why they measure in megapixels. It's millions of pixels and you basically just measure the width by the height to figure it out. So any picture that you take, that would be the megapixels that it is. You know, just for example, if I go back to this one, and this is a higher resolution one, if I go to image size, it's telling me it's 1440 by 1080. So if I multiply them together, I would get 1,555,200. In other words, 1.5 megapixels. So this isn't very big image that we're working on here in Photoshop. It's only 1.5 megapixel when you do that. So 12 megapixel would be a lot bigger. This is only uh, 4.8 by 3.6, but it's 300 pixels per inch. So you'll see a lot bigger images than that. And this one, if I go into this one, this original one, it's only 400 times 200. I mean, it's not even, it's not even a megapixel when you think of it that way. It doesn't even have a million pixels, so it's a very small image, but it's not meant to be, might be meant to go on the web or email it to somebody or whatever. So again, megapixels, millions of pixels. That's all you have to remember from that. File formats, just a couple things to know. JPEG is the most popular for photographic images. It compresses very well. Ping image is also can be used for almost graphic images that have just a limited amount of colors, but it can also create images with transparency. So it's a very powerful image. So you'll see a lot of these on the web, the JPEGs and the PNGs. Uh, TIFF files used for print. If you have computer graphics or anything like that, you might learn about a print file. That's a, a photographic file that's used for print. Bitmaps aren't really used anymore for one bit images. You'll hardly see that. That was back in the 80s and 90s. We used to use bitmaps. GIF, you might see GIF image. They can actually be saved with animation, but they would be for reduced amounts of color. So GIF and Ping has formats for things like icons and for clip art and logos, stuff like that would be GIF and Ping images that you'll see a lot. And here's an animation. Now this is a GIF animation that's going on here. And it's basically three, three images that are repeating. He's looking left, he's looking right, and he's looking straight ahead. And it's just repeating. You've probably seen GIF images on on the web and on, on Facebook or whatever, just little short images. They're, they're meant to be real short because they take up a lot of file space. Video takes up a lot of space, but this is only three images that's just kind of looping here. So that's a GIF image because it's just using a lot of flat color. It's using yellow, red, black, and I guess white pixels on there. So, and, and ping images also can be used for that, although they don't animate. GIF images animate. So that's kind of our little intro to digital data and pixels. Hopefully you took that all in. So that's the end of this. Just some terms to know. Pixels, you know what a pixel is, bit depth. There's a bitmap, grayscale, and RGB bit depths based on how many colors they have. There's additive and subtractive color. Additive is RGB color like you see on your computer monitor. Subtractive is like paint. Hue, saturation, and lightness is basically how you can mix up color. Image size. Image size is basically the physical size of the image. It could be in inches. It could be in pixels as well. Uh, megapixels is millions of colors. Resolution is pixels per inch. Low resolution is typically 72 pixels per inch. And high resolution is typically 300 pixels per inch. And that's used for print. So those are just some terms to know as we dig into digital data and pixels a little bit more. We're going to be editing photos and stuff like that. So we won't be focusing too much on all this technical kind of stuff here, but it gives you a little bit background of what you're dealing with as far as digital data.